Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about building tension. Now, first before we get into the video, stay tuned to the end because I have a special announcement. When it comes to role play, one of the really satisfying things about role play is being part of that roller coaster of tension and release. So, how do you do this? How do you make your partner feel that tension? First, start with a strong character. Building tension is far more difficult if you haven't spent the time allowing your partner to really get to know and care about your character. So make sure that you've spent the time building out your character and showing that character to your partner. If you need help on this, I'm gonna link some character help stuff up in the card. So I would recommend going and watching some of my character help videos. So let's say you have a character that you love and your partner loves them and you also really love your partner's character. So what's next? Next, focus on the emotions. If things are tense, write about sweaty palms or a racing heartbeat or a nervous stutter or your character tripping over themselves or whatever is really making them nervous. Bring your partner into that inner world of your character so that they can feel that tension that your character is feeling. And stay focused on those emotions. Zoom into that moment slow things down. In real life, when things are tense, things feel really slow. This is because your fight or flight instinct is kicking in, and what that does is it makes you pay attention to things you wouldn't normally, and so everything feels slower. You can do this by slowing down your pace. So, for example, this is something that you might normally write. Gail walked into the room and saw Cassandra. She smiled and waved at her friend. But if Gail didn't expect to see Cassandra there, and they had just recently gotten into a fight, there would be tension, so we would write that differently. So I'll give an example of that. Gail walked into the room and stopped in her tracks. There was Cassandra. What was she doing there? Gail's jaw clenched and she felt her heart pound in her chest. She adjusted her grip on the basket she was carrying before giving up on her sweaty palms and putting it on the end table by the door. She took a breath to calm her nerves. She smiled and waved at her friend determined to maintain civility. The second example, things are crazy tense. When you slow down your writing, you force your partner to also slow down their reading. And if you immediately make things go fast again, you can do the writing equivalent of a jump scare. In addition to slowing down your writing, it's also important to slow down your expectations. Tension is by nature uncomfortable. And because in role play we're controlling all of the writing, it can be really tempting to immediately remove that tension so that you don't feel uncomfortable anymore. However, we need to sit in that tension if we want to feel the real release of that tension when we do remove it. Let tension sit and fester for multiple posts, multiple threads, maybe even the entire plot before you release it. And once that tension is released, if you've sat in it and waited, it's going to feel so much better. Another thing that can help with building tension is to think of your plot as a bunch of puzzle pieces that you're trying to fit together. Let's consider the writing advice of Chekhov's gun. What Chekhov's gun means when it comes to writing is that everything that is placed in a scene must have a purpose. So explicitly, if you write about a gun sitting on a table, at some point in that scene, the gun must go off. Now, of course, in role playing, a lot of what we're doing is improv. So no matter how good you are at improv, it's gonna happen that plot points and things get dropped and forgotten about or retconned or things like that. It's the nature of what we're doing when it comes to role play. However, a skilled role player will leave lots of breadcrumbs around. And even though they don't necessarily know how exactly they're gonna circle back to those breadcrumbs, they eventually will. You can do this too. You can introduce things that you don't necessarily know how you're gonna come back to them, but still keep them in mind and come back later. It can also be great if you drop something that inspires your partner and then they pick up that thread and build it into something great in their um, replies for the role play. So do your best to either take notes or build a mental catalog of the things that you've introduced into the role play that you need to come back to later. You can use all of these things to build tension. Another place tension comes from is the reader knowing something that the characters don't. 
Often in role play, we're writing from a limited perspective of our character, but it can be useful if you're wanting to build tension to sort of pull back from that a little bit and sometimes write from a more omnipotent perspective. For example, write that the bad guy is hiding under the table, inches away from grabbing your character's ankle, but your character doesn't know about it. Or write that your character didn't notice that their spouse was glaring at them on the other side of the room. This is going to make the thread tense, because what's going to happen is your partner is going to be waiting with bated breath for your character to notice that thing that's threatening them. So that's all about tension from a pending surprise right? And it can be tempting to think about tension in the same way that they that we think about surprise, but it doesn't necessarily have to be this. Tension can also come from making your partner believe that there's a surprise, but not delivering on it. So let's talk about that. It's helpful when thinking in this way to think about the genre you're writing in and the tropes that tend to be present in that genre. When we use those tropes, we give our partner an idea of what might be coming next if they're familiar with them as well, and this can build tension based on their expectation. I also think using these normal tropes that are common in your genre is really good for building tension because it allows your partner to know kind of what you're thinking, and they can pick up these things and run with them in their reply so that you're not doing all the work of building the story. I've also found that it's easier to build that type of tension when you have someone that you've been writing with for a long time and you really know their style very well and what they like and they know your style well and what you like. So you guys are able to feed off of each other in regard to that, in regard to each other's expectations. So what other tips do you guys have in regard to building tension when it comes to role play? Let me know down below. Okay, so thank you for staying tuned to the end. This is the special announcement time. I'm wearing a party hat because this is the video that's going up closest to my birthday. Yay! So if you would like to say happy birthday to me and also help out my channel, I am adding to my description after this video a link to my Amazon wish list as well as a link to PayPal donations. Everything on my wish list is stuff that is going to help my channel grow so that I can make better videos for you guys faster and deliver better content to the role play community. The whole goal here is helping out you guys as role players. So everything given through that PayPal and everything purchased on that wish list is going directly into helping the channel. So if you are able to help out, please do so. Would love to have your assistance. It's all down below in the description. Thank you so much, even if you're just considering it. And remember to like if you like this video, comment down below with any questions that you have, subscribe for more videos, click that bell for notifications, all the links to my social media down in the doobly-doo. Thank you so much for watching and make it a great day.